Welcome to 5 More Mistakes Every Noob Makes in Valorant, brought to you by Logitech G. Since the release of our last video, we've been taking down notes about things that we've been seeing new players on our team struggle with. If you find that your team has a lot of trouble winning rounds, it's often because of the mistakes that we'll cover in this video. These mistakes often lead to plays with a very low chance of success. Most of the time, they cause you to lose not because your aim was bad, but because you made bad life decisions. It is so, so, so easy not to make these mistakes, and we guarantee that Valorant becomes a lot more fun when people don't make silly plays like these. One of the biggest causes of lost rounds is greedy kill chasing. There are way too many games where players refuse to hold choke points into sights and just push out into an enemy team on their own and die. We're not saying don't push enemies. That would be entirely wrong as well, and we'll cover that later in this video. We're saying not to rush around a corner without information on where the enemy is standing, or using some kind of utility. For example, in this clip, the player has information on where the enemy is standing because of the footsteps they've made. They can gauge that there's only one or two people and can tell generally where they're standing because of the audio cues. Because of this, he can easily swing around the corner with their crosshair in a generally good spot and pre-fire the enemies, getting a kill. Here's an example of what not to do. The player here pushes out at the start of the round into open territory and gets killed instantly. Zero info, doesn't shoulder peek, just plain hard inting. Please don't do this, please. Here's another example of people chasing kills. An enemy gets spotted and the whole team rotates for that one kill and then the spike gets planted. Always make sure that you rotate based on where the spike is. You give up map control for free if you don't and the enemies can just sneak in. The best case scenario is that they get a cheeky plant off. The worst case scenario is that your team starts getting shot in the back. As a part of the last point, if you're on defense and you've killed the spike carrier, rotate and just guard the spike so that the attacking team can't retrieve it. It's infinitely easier to guard the one spike than guarding two sites. Lastly, when you're playing on defense, unless a certain site keeps getting systematically dismantled, please pick a spot to hold and stick with it. A lot of greedy players tend to think, oh, they hit B last round, so I'm going to go there and get kills, only to leave A open entirely. We really shouldn't have to explain why leaving a site open is a bad idea. A massive mistake a lot of players make is dying on their own with the spike in a really inconvenient location. We have collectively seen so many games where a teammate says, go A, grabs the spike, runs to A, and dies instantly without the team's backup. It's very difficult to retrieve the spike in these situations and often results in a round lost. Rushing in and dying with the spike isn't the only way to do this. If you've got the spike and you see that your entire team has managed to take a site on the other side of the map, you've goofed hard. Even if you think your team is bad, you should never take the spike somewhere on your own. What you should do is take the spike and push with your teammates. You can at least use them as bait. When you have the spike, your job is to plant it as fast as you can once the site has been secured. In reference to mistake number one in this video, if you have the spike and your team secured a site and you chase kills instead of planting, anything bad that happens for the rest of the round is solely your fault and you should feel sorry if you lose it. So, at the start of this list, we had recklessly pushing for kills as a mistake. This is the flip side of that, where players don't push for a kill when they should. Often, when you have information on an enemy's position, you want to push and kill the enemy before they have a chance to reposition. One of the most basic versions of doing something with your information is trading kills. When a teammate pushes out for a psych take but dies after clearing the corner, you need to immediately push out and kill the person who just killed your teammate. This is called trading kills, and it's one of the most fundamental skills to have in a game like Valorant. When your teammate dies, you usually should know exactly where the person who killed him is standing. You want to place your crosshair on that spot when you push around the corner and start firing as soon as you've got the angle. Sometimes, trying to trade the kill doesn't work out. Sometimes you whiff your shot. Sometimes the initial push just wasn't that good of an idea. This may be controversial, but messing up the trade is entirely okay. It is almost always better to fail at trading a kill than to not attempt the trade whatsoever because at least you tried to do the right thing. Even the best players whiff their shots, but they don't hesitate to go in with their teammates. If you're aiming to play as a pair with a teammate and play around them, make sure you communicate with them. Say or type something. Tell them, hey, I'm going to flash and push. Not only will this increase your chances of having a successful play, it increases your chances of surviving the trade too. If you don't have a mic or a headset, but you're serious about wanting to play Valorant, you should really get one. Being able to effectively communicate with your teammates doesn't just help you, it helps your entire team. It, um, it Calling out info on the enemy team and their positions is so immensely helpful. 
If you want to flash and push out, you'll have a higher chance of a teammate following the play if you say something. If you do happen to be looking for a new headset, you should check out the Logitech G website. They've got top quality stuff, and if you make a call and your teammates don't listen, you'll know it's your teammates ignoring you and not faulty equipment. This one's a really big issue that a lot of new players have. If a teammate is watching an entrance, don't watch the same entrance from the exact same spot. That's how you line up for an enemy to get two very fast and easy kills. Whenever you're holding a choke point with an ally, always try to set up a crossfire. This means that you and your teammates are looking at the same entrance, but from different spots. This way, if enemies try to push through the choke point, they'll get shot from two completely different angles and won't be able to defend themselves effectively. This goes for pushing as well. If you're pushing with a teammate, make sure you're both watching each other's blind spots. Check the corners that they don't check and make sure you're both clearing as much space as you can. Last but not least, if you're playing with a teammate and have a crossfire set up with them, don't just randomly drop your angle without saying anything. Your teammate is counting on you to hold your angle, and if you just drop it for no reason and don't say anything, you expose your teammate to getting pushed from an angle he thought he was safe. This is probably the most common mistake that noobs make in games like Valorant, and to be fair, you really need to be taught this. If you don't have enough credits for at least heavy shields and a Vandal slash Phantom pass round 3 on either side, just save your credits. This literally means don't buy anything, or at least make sure the number in this spot in your buy screen is between 3,900 to 4,500 credits based on how much utility you already have or plan to use. If you don't have credits to buy heavy shields and a Vandal slash Phantom, it means you've been losing your rounds. Often, it means you've been losing a lot of rounds in a row. If you continue to buy weapons without armor, or weaker weapons and armor, you're usually just throwing your credits away because your better equipped enemies will straight up have better equipment. To use an analogy, fighting a fully equipped team in Valorant with partial buys is like fighting a character that's 1-3 to three levels higher than you in League of Legends. Sure, you could win it, but if your enemy plays correctly, you really shouldn't. If you do have a little bit of extra credits, say your minimum next round is 5800, but you only have like 2900 this round, you're allowed to buy a small item. The point is that you always want to make sure that you'll be able to have enough to be fully equipped as many rounds as possible. Even if your teammates refuse to save, you'll have a gun and be able to go toe to toe with your enemies. And chances are, if you're in a game where your teammates refuse to save, you're also in a game where you can easily outplay your enemies with a good buy. Thank you guys for watching. If you recognize a lot of these mistakes from your game, just give our guides a like. As usual, if you want to see more Valorant content, feel free to comment what kind of videos you would like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.